Somebody ask a question on there about um, a difficulty that they had with their body, hormones, etc., and going forward to realization and this nonsense that they put out there. Well, it's due to the sexual energy, and it not, has nothing to do with sexual energy. This is the problem when you get near do wells out there putting out this nonsense. You know, realization in the spiritual path is about consciousness. Okay? It has nothing to do with the physicality of form. So, you know, let go of all that nonsense. It's about what you're holding to, okay? and being blown out. What's blown out? Is your body blown out in realization? No. Okay, it's about consciousness. It's about the mental realm. It's about what's being held. Okay, it has nothing to do with the physicality of form. So let go of all that nonsense. Okay. Um, you know, sex sales. What can I say? Sex sells, but it has nothing to do with realization, okay? Um, the only reason I say is better to be celibate because what happens when you're having sexual relationships, where's your focus? It's externalized, okay? The path is internalization. What's going on internally? It's not about pulling your focus external, external. And again, if you're having sex, where is your focus? It's on the body. It's on the externalized, transient, temporal drama of the world. Okay? So again, has nothing to do with that. And these ones that are selling these so-called tantra courses of sexuality and you know, you can go and have your sexual partner and get to enlightenment through sex. That's totally bogus, okay? Did Ramana, was Ramana out there having rampant sex? Uh, no, okay? It's an internal journey. And through my own journey, I can tell you it's an internal journey. It's not about sex, okay? So let go of that nonsense, okay? Um, it's about the inner world, consciousness, okay? So that's something I want to dispel um, when it comes to that type of thing. Uh, now, last night I watched a video, and it was... Uh, called something Enlightenment, and it was the Dalai Lama and doing the Kala Chakra, the Kala Chakra initiations. Now I have been through Kala Chakra initiations. My name that was given to me is Karma Sonam Wong Mo, which means she who dedicates her, her, all her good benefit to humanity. Karma Sonam Wong Mo. So yes, I had gone through the Kala Chakra initiations, and Kala Chakra, it's a, um, it's supposed to be, but this, this is what I don't get if you've ever lived in India. Now there are two paths, there are two paths. In Buddhism, one of them is the path of practices, okay, actual, uh, Awakening Kundalini actually going through that process, okay? And then there's the other path, which you see more of there, which I don't understand why they're doing Kala Chakra initiations, because it's really about, um, it, that's an energetic path, an energetic happening, but they're more into just the, um, the intellectual side of it. Okay, you'll see them, if you've lived in Dharamsala, you'll see them out there doing this, this, this debating. It's all intellectual, okay? 
all intellectual. Now there is some meditation that they're doing with it, but it's not like um, those that are fully immersed into practices which are living out in the caves, okay? They, they are not in a big group setting. Usually the practice ones, you are on your own. You're like the hermit, you're, you're doing your own journey. It's an internalized journey, okay? So again, very, very different. I do have here one of my tankas of the um, Kali Chakra, the Kala Chakra, which is basically, uh, the Kala Chakra itself is about time, it's about energy systems, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, but again, it doesn't do good to sit there and intellectualize everything, okay? Now, another thing that, that really is, there's one thing that really kind of is disturbing for me with the Tibetan and the Dalai Lama. Now, the Dalai Lama is not a vegetarian, okay? <laughs> we got all these people who want to say he's a vegetarian. Well, no, and even Buddha was not vegetarian, okay? Their, their thing was, don't kill something for me. Okay, that was their view. Don't kill something for me. But they would eat meat absolutely 100%. So this idea of vegetarianism is a recent thing, had nothing to do with really the spiritual path. <clears throat> Buddha was eating meat and he's an enlightened being. So hello, wake up people. Um, so again, has nothing to do with the consciousness and this idea if you eat an animal, if you eat that, that it's going to, you're eating their pain, you're eating the suffering. Well, vegetables also suffer, okay? So again, you know, a, a totally nonsensical drama. Um, it's, you know, whatever you eat like that, physicality of stuff comes out of the body, okay? It's what you're taking in, in mental realm, within your own, um, your own ideations that can be the difficulty, okay? So I wanted to touch on that, but that, oh yes, the one thing with the Tibetan thing, they have the oracle. Now, the oracle goes into this trance and some sort of a being comes through and it's, it's just very, um, I don't get a real good feeling about the oracle. Now, I met the oracle before when I was in Dharamsala, okay? I've met that oracle before, but it's, you know, it's such, um, I don't know, you'd have to see him, okay? Why does the enlightened being need the oracle, okay? <laughs> truth is truth, and enlightenment is coming to that divine is, okay? Doesn't mean that you know everything that's going to happen in the transient world. That's not what it means. It means that all this other stuff is blown out and one is within peace within themselves, okay? One has come back to the zero. It's like in the, <clears throat> you know, in our deck, the 22 major arcana have to do with the spiritual path, okay? I'm trying to find the fool here, the fool, here it is. It's about our spiritual path. We start out in unknowing anything. You do the path, and what is it? The first thing, you know, people want to, oh, the magician is so powerful. No, the, the magician is ego, <clears throat> wanting to control, wanting to manipulate, 
wanting to, you know, be able to make these changes. That's the beginning of the path. Ego wants to go out and control, okay? <clears throat> the fool starts out knowing nothing. It wants to control. It wants to, you know. So you, you've got the major arcana that talks about the spiritual path. <clears throat> but the end point is again zero. Now this zero is different than the zero going into it. The zero going into it has to do with um, the uh, not knowing anything in the transient world and you know making the journey wanting to find out wanting knowledge wanting you know wanting knowledge wanting control wanting these things okay <clears throat> and you're willing to jump off the cliff to get it you know you're going willy-nilly well the end point when you come back, you come back to the zero. But this zero is different than the zero of unknowing, <clears throat> of not knowing and wanting knowledge. It's when all the transient temporal stuff that you wanted to gather and collect on the spiritual path is blown out. <laughs> it's the great leveler. <clears throat> People think that enlightenment means you're going to get higher, you're going to have more powers, you're going to have, you know, it, it's the opposite. Everything is stripped bare, okay? Everything is stripped bare and blown out. And then, one is in the zero realm, and you know that everything is eternal in nature, and so there is no fear. There is no fear. There is this um, radical shift in consciousness <clears throat> and all the things you wanted to gather and collect on the path and knowledge and all of this stuff is blown out because you've seen that it's you come back to that balance okay I call a zero point balance when it comes back to that balance that's still center that's still within the no matter what happens you you become like the wheel, okay? Kind of like Chali Chakra, the Kali Chakra wheel. You start out at the edges of it, and you go into the internal. You get to the center, and you become what? You become like the axle that everything revolves around. When you're doing the journey, you're what? You're on the edge of it, hanging on for dear life, and trying to make your way to the center, okay? But when you get to the center, you drop into the, become, you become the axle, you become that still point, you become that center, and everything else revolves around it, okay? So it's a totally different <clears throat> ideation, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then one continues the journey, but in a radically different um consciousness, awareness, and sense of stability, okay? So, yeah, <clears throat> but uh, there are so many mistaken notions out there that if one becomes a vegetarian, if I wear white, if I become a vegetarian, if I never wear makeup, if I never wear jewelry, I'm so much higher, I'm so much more enlightened. No, you're playing the game with yourself. I also had somebody ask about crystals. I might as well get into that with this as well. Crystals, they're asking about, can different crystals relate to the chakras and this and that and no, okay? So people want to, if crystals are just a point of reference, okay, <clears throat> that's why I don't clean crystals, I don't, you know, I enjoy the beauty of them, but I don't hold to them as having any extra power. When they have the power, there's the other things, it's just that what you are programming your mental space in a belief system, okay? Just like 
you know, if you're wearing the orange cloth, the kavi, it doesn't hold anything special because it is orange in color or because you're wearing white, okay? It just keeps your attention and focus in that. The symbology of it opens things in your space, in your mind, in your consciousness, okay? So same thing with crystals. It is a focal point that can, if you have that belief system, that can allow those things to open. It's quantum, quantum physics, okay? That belief system allows you to open that and allow that to merge. But within itself, it has nothing, okay? Just like at places that you go that you want to hold as sacred. Just like you say, oh, this point, oh, it's so holy. No, there's not one place more holy than the other place because what? God, the divine is, is equally everywhere. It's just your attention that you have to that and the mental uh, storyline that you're putting on there. Now, if you have everybody with that mental storyline that's putting that there, then yes, okay, you, you go in, you accept that, and you open up to that, and what's gonna happen that's going to emerge? Same thing with doing third eye meditation. You get to the astral, and you can have all sorts of fantasy things that are coming to light. You can meet gods, goddesses, realms, etc. Okay, but it is a journey of consciousness. It's like if you leave the form and you're on the other side, what happens? The minute one thinks about something, they're immediately there, okay? It's immediate. Why? Because of quantum. So all of these things coming down. Now, if you hold, that's why I say when you're, doing your altar or whatever, you do something that relates to you, has the symbology to you. And so that's why it works for you. And it may be different for somebody else, okay? Uh, it's, it's like, um, you are within your own universe, okay? And it comes out of your mental holdings. That's why the, the path to realization is an internal journey. You are confronting your own fears. You're confronting your own illusions. You're confronting the things that are holding you. You're confronting your restrictions. You're confronting your uh, ideations, okay? But again, if you're wearing orange coffee, it's there to remind you that you are burning out, burning out the, uh, the illusions, the, the drama, okay? If you're wearing white, you're keeping what? In this mental framework of purity, okay? But it's building your own framework. Same thing with crystals. Now, if you see crystals, oh, this one does this and this one does that, and you really hold to that and you open to that, you are creating that reality, that opening that space within yourself, okay? That's the way it works. Everything comes down to quantum and what you're holding to, the storylines, etc., Realization is the blowing out of those storylines. <clears throat> it's coming to just that um, <clears throat> primal, the primal is, the primal is of this energetic life that is eternal, that's open to knowledge, it's open to wisdom. Okay? It's kind of like in the beginning, you have the, um, what do you call it? Is it an allegory about Adam and Eve? 
They were in the garden. They were with God. They were enlightened beings, okay, <laughs> basically, <laughs> okay. They were going on. They were naked. They thought nothing of it, okay. They were just in that moment of that bliss and that happiness of that zero point balance. They were there. But what did they want to know? Good from evil. All they knew was good. All they knew was good. So they wanted to experience knowledge. They wanted knowledge. So then came the temporal form and the so-called fall. So what? So one could have these different experiences of knowledge, transitory, temporal knowledge of the world of duality, okay? So that's, you know, that's the whole thing. It's here to gain knowledge, to gain experiences, okay? And then one leaves that and comes back into that realm okay, of love, acceptance, all of those things. And then one goes back into a different, you know, there are so many different levels and layers of consciousness and realms, etc. And one just continues that journey of experience, experiential things, okay. And since this planet is so difficult, they have made our lifetime here in these transitory forms limited because this is a very difficult plane of existence, of experience, okay? So we have very limited so-called lifetimes. These vehicles will only run for so long before they give up the ghost, <laughs> okay? And we, we move out of them, go back up, okay? have the life review, and then go on to some new experience. Could be this realm, could be a different realm, different planet, a different body form, a different awareness, a different experience, okay? So anyway, on that note, man, we've covered a lot of different things here this morning in this chit chat, I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <clears throat> but yeah, um, the world is a mysterious place. It all has to do with quantum. It all has to do with the mental space and what one is holding to. Now, again, when I began my, began my journey, I was in depression, PTSD, flashbacks, you know, really difficult circumstances, okay? And all I wanted to do was get out of this world. I would do anything to get out of this world, hence the journey. You get to realization and you find out there's nothing wrong with this world. It was the mental spin. It was the things being held onto, the things being resisted, the things being, you know, storylines that one is making up and holding to and making themselves miserable. And really, in the end, you come down to the fact that you were, um, uh, yes, events happen, but you keep running that old tape in it and the storyline and the poor me and the saga that's going on with it, and you're victimizing yourself. <laughs> Well, that's pretty stupid. I'm <laughs> victimizing myself. Why am I doing this, you know? But again, all of that comes out of the spiritual path in the inner search. And, and uh, these are the things one has to come to knowledge within yourself. I could sit here and tell you about this all day, but it's not going to change your world. You have to do the inner journey yourself. That's why we have the hermit they start out in, in the, you know, you start out with the fool wanting to know, and then the next thing is the magician wanting to be able to control, wanting to be able to manipulate, wanting to, but further down the line, we have what? The hermit, where you start to get serious about looking deeper, okay? 
looking deeper. Okay. Rather than wanting to manipulate the unknown, rather than wanting to, to do that space. Okay. So, yeah. Again, major arcana, and then we have the, the other ones, earth, air, fire, okay? We have those type of things, earth, air, fire, water, emotions, actions, mental realm, grounded, this in-life experience, okay? Tarot is basically the life path that all of us travel. The mental spins that we go through, the actions that we think we're gonna do, the emotional drama, and then the physical happenings. That's what Tarot is. It's the story of the spiritual search, of the life path, okay? And the major arcana is basically the spiritual journey, and the rest of it is the daily happenings connected with that, <clears throat> okay? So, yeah, people that want to say, oh, Tarot, and it's evil, and this and that, and if you understand what it is, it's about the life journey. What is evil about that? <laughs> There's nothing evil in the life journey, okay? So again, you have so much uh, misinformation, and that's why they say a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing, okay? Because you have a little bit of knowledge and you think you know it all, and then you're making these assumptions and what what's an assumption, okay? An ass, making an ass, okay? So, again, it's about the journey. It's about the internal journey, coming to starting out not knowing, wanting to have knowledge, wanting to gain that, and in the end, finding out all of that was <laughs> ephemeral, ephemeral, okay? Oh, I wanted to know about the light and the dark. Well, I found out, okay, okay now I... I I'll let go of that. <laughs> That's not so enticing in the end. <laughs> so it's like enlightenment is the great universal joke at the end. You just laugh. You laugh because you're looking for God in the first. Where's God? And I feel so isolated. And I'm so, well, we, we're the ones that isolate ourselves and we couldn't get away from it if we tried because it's what gives us life. It's what the life that we are in, it's the whole unfolding of all of this. <laughs> so you get to that point, you just laugh. Oh my God. This I feel, what a maroon. <laughs> the great universal joke, okay? But we, we choose to make that journey. That was our choice to make that journey, and the suffering we encounter is due to our own mental um, limitations that we've put on ourselves, okay? The, the prisons that we construct because we want to be safe, okay? But constructing a prison is not safe. Same thing I say when people say, oh, well, what about protection? Putting this protection around yourself. <laughs> protection from what? Protection from what? Evil, darkness is false knowledge. It's a shadow. It's the illusion. So what are you protecting yourself from? You're going to give that power? Okay. <laughs> you are a light being. That's what you are at the core of being, the light beyond lights. So what are you protecting yourself from? From your own imaginations, your own illusions, your own dramas, your own... <laughs> so I want people to ask, did, did, you know, if you're a Christian, did Christ say put a bubble of light around yourself? No. 
that light was there because it is a light being. We are light beings. Okay? So again, you know, the people take these things and uh, get so tangled up in knots about so much of this stuff. And, um, yeah, I wish there were a magic wand that one could wave and immediately expose all these things, but then that would defeat the purpose of coming here because the purpose of coming here is to do your own journey, okay? And you have to be ready to reach that point of that internalization, being in that isolation, being in that, you know, wilderness, going out alone by yourself in the wilderness to confront what? Your own drama, your own demons you're creating, your own fallacy, your own storylines. It's what it's about. Moving that forward, taking that ride. Okay, are you trusting in that chariot, that ride? Okay, or are you wanting to manipulate it? Okay, so again, there's so much of this. Um, that can be spoken of, but again, everyone has to make their own journey. Okay, and whether they are seeking the things of the spirit or they're totally closed off and just wanting this nominal life. Things are eternal, okay? <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm, I'm going to leave this here and I'll see you online. <laughs>